everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the November 2021 Chemnitz Dialong Livestream where we dyed a lot of yarn inspired by this cool squirrel picture. In particular, we used a few different luxury yarn bases which include Knit Picks Aristo, Luminance, and Gloss Lace. But I did also dye some Stroll fingering weight yarn on the countertop using Dharma Acid dyes in Fawn, Pecan Brown, Platinum, Sand Dune, and a little bit of Alpine Blue, which we could still see here. You can see those blue pops. I just removed the yarn from the steamer basket and I'm about to go wash it all off camera, but I wanted to show that the stroll does feel a little bit more pigmented than our three silk blends or just 100% silk. And part of that is that the colors do strike a little bit faster to a Superwash Merino nylon blend. Uh, I will talk about the fiber content of all of them in a moment when I show the dry yarn, but I did want to show that these three skeins look, the silk and silk blends look extraordinarily similar to one another when wet. I'm gonna go ahead and wash these four skeins off camera and then we'll show them dry at the end. But I'll let you know if there's any issues with color bleeding. However, I am expecting our silk blends to lighten significantly from where they are right now, as that tends to be the nature with silk-based yarn. I did most of the washing with a little bit of dish soap off camera in cool water. There was a tiny bit of some bleeding at the beginning, but since we applied dry dye powder onto all this yarn, that isn't super surprising. But the bleeding did quickly clear, so I'm gonna put this through the spin dryer and we're gonna talk about a second project. Whenever I was using the dry dye powder, I wore my P100 respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. During the live stream, I was too tired to do a second colorway, so I'm gonna do that right now. Using two skeins of Knit Picks Preciosa Worsted, one skein of the limited edition Bear Andean Highland Wool that is no longer available, unfortunately, and a skein of Stroll for good measure. I twisted all of this pre-soaked yarn in the steam pan and then started layering on these colors that I had mixed, really dyeing by feel. My plan was to measure out some of the dye by feel, layer these colors onto the yarn, waiting for the majority of the color to absorb to our fiber before retwisting the yarn and adding more color in another way. So this way the light colors will layer and we'll have a soft, squirrely kind of colorway. With the blue, I plan to just add a few little pops uh, near the end because I do not want the blue to overtake the brown, but I really am enjoying this, this alpine blue with these warm and cool toned browns and grays. I think it's looking really, really beautiful. Once I was satisfied with the color coverage, I heat the yarn for 30 minutes on the stovetop and then let it cool completely before washing it off camera and putting it through the spin dryer to dry. It's really interesting to me how the stroll took on more pinks from that fawn dye than the other bases did. And I would say that this bulky yarn seems to have less pigment on it overall, but Either way, I am now heating this for 30 minutes on low heat. Then I will turn off the heat and let the yarn cool completely uh, so we can wash it. But since three of our bases are non-superwash, I do want to take that slow, <laughs> the cool down slow. And this single ply Preciosa is probably gonna clump together because I think that's what that base does. And with the bit of extra dye that I have mixed, I'm just gonna quickly go dye a tonal on another skein of stroll off camera. Ooh, never mind. Uh, I just removed the steamer basket and turns out we had some color drip below all of those silks. So that will be part of our leave no dye behind here as well, along with a little bit of platinum, a lot of pecan brown because that is the one I use the least on the colorways in the steam pan, and then a tiny bit more of that fawn color. Now I am going to add this skein of dry stroll. There's no acid in here yet unless some drip down 
from those silk blends. But since we have our yarn dry, we will likely see some amount of variation on this skein. But we should be able to get a really, really nice brown yarn. In general, stroll soaks up water really, really, really fast. So if I move it enough, then we should be able to get reasonable coverage and just squeeze it to make sure that those dry patches can soak up water. So we don't end up with like, I don't mind if we end up with light spots, but we don't want like a pure white spot. That feels like a mistake. Okay, and now I'll add more acid shortly, but I am actually gonna put the steamer basket back on and steam our yarn mop one more time because I did wipe some blue dye onto it as we were dyeing those other colorways. So I'm gonna heat this for 30 minutes, let it cool, wash it off camera, and then let's go, now. and now finally, let's go see the dry yarn. Here is all of the finished dry yarn that I dyed inspired by squirrels. There are two different main colorways with a combined total of six different yarn bases. And then we have a yarn mop and a leave no dye behind skein. During the live stream, I dyed four different yarn bases with dry powder on the countertop. And these bases were Nitpick Stroll, which I threw in as a control known comparison colorway. Uh, and Stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And then we have Gloss Lace, which is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. Luminance, which is 100% mulberry silk. And then Aristo, which is 70% merino, 15% cashmere, 15% silk. And I would say that there are some real obvious differences here. The Luminance, this 100% silk, is significantly less pigmented than any of these wool blends. And this is consistent with what I talk about a lot for the paint swatches on dye jars because those colors there are reflecting colors dyed with silk, and so sometimes they feel a lot more pastel than what I might see on wool, and that's because silk just takes, needs more color. To get the same level of pigmentation, I would have needed to use a lot more dye. Now, I haven't attempted to go super saturated on 100% silk, and that is something I would like to do at some point. Uh, but I am worried about like bleeding or damaging it, but I would say that we still have a very uh, luminous luminance yarn. I have no idea if you can see the shine there, but it is in person. It is very, very silky and shiny and soft, and I think it's really beautiful. The Gloss and Aristu both dyed fairly similarly. The colors did spread, but we allowed that. Like, I wasn't going for sharp speckles. You can see some of the spread on here. But the difference between using non-superwash and superwash yarn means that we have more blending of the colors on these two bases. Just moments ago, you watched me dye this colorway that has let brown be the star with pops of blue. And I dyed 200 grams of Preciosa Worsted, which is just 100% merino wool and is a very lofty uh, single ply yarn. And while it is not felted, the yarn sticks to itself. And so it will sort of be able to be wound into a cake extraordinarily easily. It is not felted, but this yarn, like, I mean, I guess, I don't know if you would call it lightly felted, but this yarn sticks to itself if you look at it crosswise, cross-eyed. So uh, I would have no problem caking this up for someone, but is a reason why for all this single ply merino wool is luxurious and precious. <laughs> it's, it's a reason why I don't dye it a lot. Uh, this super bulky Andean something or other, it's 100% Andean Highland wool, is awesome. Like, it is so bulky. It fluffed up gorgeously through dyeing. It's not as pigmented as the other colors. And you can see that because it's also fairly low twist, the colors just really spread through it in a way that it didn't so much on the stroll and even the Preciosa, you see more, a little bit more variation. But this, on the stroll, the colors are a bit different and the color sections are a little bit less blended and that is just because the colors were able to strike it that much faster. 
but I am very excited with these soft neutral colorways that we dyed up. Finally, we have the yarn mop that I used to wipe my hands on and wipe up any spills when we were dyeing yarn in the live stream, and a little bit from the extra colorway I dyed just now. But then all the dye left over combined to this beautiful uh, neutral brown. It's a little bit, it's got some warmth to it, but it is more, I guess, like of a reddish warmth versus a yellowish warmth. Uh, so like that fawn color that is a little more orange leaning. This doesn't feel orange to me. This does feel cooler. And that's likely because there's a lot of pecan brown left over, which cooled everything off. But it is warmer than pecan brown. And here is all of the yarn. I had a lot of fun trying to make the color brown a star. This is something in my head I always want to do, but I don't think I do often enough because a lot of people will say their least favorite color is brown. And I mean, I really like the color brown a lot. Not only is it a color that I associate with natural wools and fibers, but brown is my last name. Brown is a beautiful combination of a lot of things. And I think it, it was just really fun to give it a real moment in a dialogue because I also really love grays. And so I think a lot of time when I do neutrals, I lean that way. I like cool toned colors a lot, but I'm just really, really happy with how these turned out. Are they as saturated as our squirrel? Maybe not. I wish that that fawn sort of punched through a little bit more, but I love these for what they are. And I'm happy for the photo for encouraging me to play with this palette. And now it's time for my favorite part of these dye along recaps, and it's time to see the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same inspiration photo. Did you go for speckles or layered colors like I did, or did you go for something completely different? Did you choose to include the blue or just focus on the squirrel and the bark and all of those depths of browns and blacks that were present? Thank you so much to everyone who submitted photos for this dialogue. If you would like to be featured in future dialogue recaps, just share your yarn that you dyed inspired by the inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue. And it could be fiber, it can be yarn, it could be cloth. All kinds of dyeing projects are absolutely welcome. And you can also submit your pictures on the Chemnitz Facebook page. Just look for the inspiration photo and reply with a photo comment. And then I will pull as many as I can to include for the recap. And now I wonder what our inspiration will be for December. Last year I did a combined December and January dialogue inspiration photo. I don't know if I'm going to do that this year as well or not as I am filming this, but there is a chance I might because December can get quite busy. But whether or not I do, you will know as soon as I share the new photo. If you love the yarn that I dyed in this video, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop because some of it might still be available. But there's also a lot of other hand dyed yarn featured in my videos in the shop, so it's a great place to check. And also just please subscribe and turn on notifications. I usually schedule the Chemnitz Dialogue live streams with advance notice, but occasionally streams happen more last minute. And if you have your notifications on, then YouTube can let you know when I go live so you can come and join and uh, give feedback and encourage me during the whole creative process, which honestly, I love so much. I am Rebecca Brown from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.